<laughs> okay, so for those people who do know me, you know how much I talk, right? And I never shut up and I move a lot. So this is all going to be really hard because I'm on a time constraint and I'm boxed in and not allowed to move. So it'll be very difficult. Um, I'm Molly Linick. I'm the registered dietitian here at OSU Wexner Medical Center, Health and Fitness Center. Um, how many people have heard of the ketogenic diet? By the way, online, most people are uh, raising their hand, but not everyone. How about if you guys tell me a few things you have heard about it? Okay, you've heard of it, but not anything useful. <laughs> it's what? It is fat driven. Yes, good. No sugar. Less carbs. Lots of meat. 80, 100 carb a day. This is all really fun. Good, bad, in between. Is it a fad diet? Yes, I hear yes. I hear could be. I hear nothing and grasshoppers. Um, so the ketogenic eating plan, I am going to describe to you how it helps you to become more metabolically flexible. And you're probably thinking, what does that mean? Well, I will continue to tell you. So if you are feeling that your body is your enemy, anyone, if you're feeling like what you eat is supposed to be right, but for some reason, it's not working. I eat healthy most of the time. Something's going on. Can't seem to lose those extra pounds that I carry around my middle. I feel bloated all the time. How about if you're walking through your day in a brain fog or after you eat, it just kind of just don't feel right. Or maybe it's that lack of energy and lack of, uh, or the fatigue that you feel throughout the day. If any of those characteristics or any of those things are re um, something that is similar to you or you have actually experienced that, truly this program is for you. Only if mine will. It's not it going. <laughs> and I'm not allowed to move. <laughs> there. Oh boy. Now it really advanced. Oh. Is there a delay? Okay. Now I'm giving you all the cheat points because I pushed too many times. Yeah, I think it is. Well, there we are. Okay. So uh, fat accumulation is truly more than just calories in, calories out. We all know that, correct? Yes? So it's not just, I'm going to eat only a certain amount of calories, and then I'm going to make sure I work off those calories. Has anyone ever done that kind of eating plan? I know I have. Okay. It is not that. Fat accumulation is way beyond that. And I also want to tell you, you've all been fooled. You've been bamboozled and misled. Our bodies are fighting against themselves. And I'll tell you why. This is why. Where did we go wrong? The SAD, the standard American diet. Because before I can convince you that a ketogenic diet is good for some people, or even if you want to consider it, I need to tell you where we have been and how this has not worked. So SAD or the standard American diet, as you can see in this little quote here, you get the standard American diseases. We know that this is a standard American diet and what we are eating is all based on the um, NHANES or da da data that we have collected. The latest data that has been collected is from, thank you, is from 2017, 2018. And what it showed is that American adults are having about 2,100 calories. Oh, I can look at it right here. 2,100 calories, seems okay. We're having about 16% of those calories from fat, 
about 47% of those from carbohydrate. Still seems okay, right? We have 36% from fat. Well, if I'm talking about fat being something that we want, you would think that would be good. And last but not least, we have 22% of all those calories up here is actually coming from added sugars. But let's look at this now. This is something that as a dietitian, I know all too, unfortunately, well. Now, did I make that little comment? Yes. Okay. So I want to show you something. Carbohydrates, right? Fruit, vegetables have carbohydrates. Grains have carbohydrates. Dairy has carbohydrates. There's one thing on this myplate.gov or the new way of thinking about eating so that we're all healthy. It's only one thing on here that does not have a true carbohydrate. So in reality, this plate here is completely carbohydrate driven. Um, but unfortunately, and fortunately, we now know actually that we have about 58% of all these calories coming from ultra processed foods. So let me tell you, when we look at some of this stuff, we already know that even our, our fruits and our vegetables have been modified, right? So let's look at yogurt. Yogurt, how sweet can we get it so we can get it down our throats? 23, 53 grams of sugar? How much, how much? So when we think about, oh, 58%, 58% being um, a high amount of all those calories of processed foods, we're all thinking, oh, we're talking about Doritos. No, we're not talking about Doritos. We're talking about when we consider fruit snacks as a fruit or fruit leathers as a fruit. So with all of that, does it sound so bad? But maybe it really is because this trend here shows me that obesity is definitely not coming down. We're also seeing a very significant rise in severe obesity. That's 2018. So 42.4% of Americans are obese. Why is that? I thought we were eating this great plate. Now, in addition to that, as you can see, the ultra processed foods have been increasing over time, but this is showing you on this line, the mortality rate as we start to consume more ultra processed foods. So as these ultra processed foods are being consumed, Mortality or death rates are also going up. Who cares? Well, we should. So what is an ultra processed food? Ultra processed food, it's anything that has been oops, processed with sugar, salt, fat, added colors, preservatives. So mostly made from substances extracted from foods and then added back in like hydrogenated oils, starches, corn starch, corn so, uh, syrup solids, et cetera. They also contain additives like uh, artificial colors and flavors and stabilizers. Let me repeat something. 2016, 58% of all calories are coming from ultra processed foods. So most of the ultra processed foods, 58% of those calories of each American, only based on data I'm pulling off from the government, I'm not making this up, are coming from ultra processed foods, which means added sugars, added starches, hydrogenated oils, stabilizers, flavorings. So in my opinion, I think those are probably higher in carbohydrates, right? That's not even the beginning. What these foods have are something called obesogens. Has anyone ever heard of those? Okay, well, when I talk about, I've got to go out of side of this. I promise I'll be right back. See, I'm back. I see you. I said, oops, 
And I also got a little bit carried away. See, I am so much fun when I give presentations. I got to keep everyone on their toes. Nothing will ever stay the same. All right. How many people drink these? How many people drink these and make sure they have them even in their cars? Yeah, man, we always have these things ready because they're healthy, right? Okay. Let me look at these plastics. Hmm. Plastics, plastics, plastics. Plastics are endocrine disruptors. Parabens and food preservatives are obesogens. They disrupt our endocrine system, creating true changes, molecular changes. I'm talking about DNA, RNA, um, the signaling of hormones change. We literally are changing how we metabolize food, how much fat we're laying down. And that here is changing our set point. So if I can burn a thousand calories a day, now my set point, because I made sure I was being healthy, has now gone down to 900. So now I can only burn 900 calories and best of all, all of these other changes happen. So we have an increased number of fat cells when our endocrine or these obesogens happen, we have an increase in the actual size of a fat cell. So now I get to shove even more into that fat cell because it's bigger. We also have an altered regulation of how that fat actually develops. So that means where is it going to get laid? Is it going to get laid around the organs and visceral fat? Or is it going to get laid in the subcutaneous stuff that I can pinch an inch from? Where? Okay. Next thing it does is it alters the hormones that regulate our appetite, how satisfied we are, and what kind of food preference we want. So essentially, it's making us crave more carbohydrates. It also alters, I have already said this, our basal metabolic rate. That's how many calories we can actually burn or use up just breathing. It also changes how our calories that we are taking in are being stored. So I'm going to eat something. And now is that, let's say it's a piece of bread. Is that bread, even though it's in my calories, is it going to be stored as fat? Or is it going to be stored or, or not even stored and use this energy the way it should? That's what this is. It also alters uh, insulin sensitivity, lipid metabolism in the endocrine tissue. So what that means is insulin sensitivity. I'll go over that in a few minutes as I go through some biochemistry that's up on my board. So when I asked you, and I actually explain to you that you've all been bamboozled, misled, that our food that we're eating, thinking we're doing really good, is actually kind of causing more havoc than we've ever thought about. I'm hoping this advances. I've hit it twice. Questions about that since it's still up there? Ah, there we go. Okay. So to summarize, so everyone is on the same page. Americans eat 58% of those total calories coming from ultra processed foods. I'm not making it up, it's data, okay? 58%. I already told you that these ultra processed foods are chemically driven, they're made up. So, those things that are in there and even the things that they are being packaged in, because, oh my goodness, we, all we, want, all we always want convenience, right? We want, you know, to put three pieces of uh, jelly, uh, I don't know, jelly beans in a little tiny container because we don't have time to unbag it and put it in a container, right? So we want the convenience. So we make sure that we're using lots and lots of plastics, okay? 
I'm not harping. I'm telling you why we have been misled. Okay. And now these things that are in these ultra processed foods are obesogens. We also know that they're refined carbohydrates. These obesogens or these things that are creating more havoc and creating more fat cells and the fat cells that are then not even acting the way they should, they're just continuing to create more, changing our metabolism, which is leading to what? More fat being stored, right? As fat, more fat is being stored, we're still more changes of our hormones, elevating our blood sugars, decreasing our metabolism, increasing more fat to be stored. Then we wonder why 42% of Americans are obese. Now, there's other reasons for that, but since I'm here and only talking about food, I'll talk about food only, but that is astounding. Questions about obesogens? I wrote about this a few years ago, um, and when I was talking about uh, cancer, and so this, isn't not, this is not something new. You may not have ever heard of it, but it's definitely been out there. Um, in relation to cancer and changing our estrogen or estrogen-like products in our, um, in our food so sources, as well as in uh, the environment and in our plastics, uh, the things that we're carrying. So what do we have to do? We know that's not working. We have to flip the metabolic switch. We have to get rid of this excess body fat because we know that, that that body fat is acting like an endocrine system. It's acting like it's sending out hormones that then continually want our bodies to store more fat, okay? So we have to get rid of this body fat by using it as energy. What does that mean? My little analogy, and I'll bet you $1,000 that this, I don't have $1,000, but I will bet you something. Um, this really great bottle of water. How about that? I'm teasing you guys. Come on, it's light. Be funny. Ha ha. And I'm sure you're all laughing and smiling underneath those masks. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, but it just didn't reach your eyes and you just look mad at me. Okay. Anyway, um, so I want to give you this analogy, and I do it all the time. Don't let this thing go away. You're on. on uh, point if this starts to go away. Okay, Joyce. All right. Thank you. Watch it closely. All right. If I had $400 million in the bank and I gave it to you, Dave, would you take it? I gave you an ATM card to access it. Would you love it? He said this. Okay. But I'm not going to give you the pin and you're not a computer hacker. So you're not going to know how to do it. So is that $400 million useful to you? No, he shook his head. So if you can't access that money, who cares if you have $400 million or $4? Because there's no way of getting into it. So that's kind of like, imagine a 400 pound person having all this extra money on their body, right? So. Let's say that half of their body is, is energy or fat, okay? Because fat is energy. Fat is amazing energy, but they can't tap into it. They can't use it. They don't have that pin to draw it out. So now what I'm asking you to uh, consider is how, first of all, do we get access to that money in my bank? Because I can't computer hack. I can't rob the bank. I cannot get into the 400 pounds and I'm walking around with all this money on my body. Can't use it. All right, I'm gonna help you by flipping that switch. What we have to do to access all that money, all that extra energy on our bodies, in our bodies, eat fat to lose fat, that doesn't make any sense. We literally have to flip the switch. We have to change the way our metabolism is working. This is the key. All right, ketogenic diet only took me almost half the time to get there. 
ketogenic diet. What is it? Okay, the premise behind the ketogenic diet is we are depleting the body of stored sugar or glycogen, okay? Glycogen is stored sugar, okay? Stored sugar or carbohydrates. That's typically our primary source of energy. So I'm gonna move and I am going to use sugar or stored energy to do that. What ends up happening in a ketogenic diet is that you force your body to burn fat as fuel because you're taking all that extra storage and getting rid of it. That's the premise. And the only thing that you're doing is giving it more fat. So you're forcing your body to learn how to use fat as energy, okay? So I'll just repeat this. When you consume foods that contain carbohydrates, those things are converted into glucose or blood sugar, which then is used as energy, okay? Any questions about that? Okay, now in our body, I'm, I'm always wondering, well, how much do I have and when can I get rid of it all so I can start tapping into my fat? Well, in our body, we carry in the liver, so these are two places we store um, excess sugar or energy readily available. One is in the liver, so that's about 400 calories, just to give you an idea. Does that help you to think about that? Okay, two bowls of cereal, there we go. Next thing we have is muscle. We have, because everyone is a little different and if we are doing, are we, if we're an athlete, we can put more in here, but we have anywhere between 1,200 and 2,800 calories all in what? Sugar, okay? All in stored sugar, got that? Okay, so what we have to do is train our fat stores to release the fat so we can get to it because it just doesn't happen. Because the 400 pound person who's walking around with this immense amount of wealth, but can't seem to get to it, you go, huh, that's weird. Because we actually have to train our body. We have to change some hormones. We have to become fat adapted. I did push the button, so I'm going to wait. Tick, tock, tick, tock. You watch. If I push it again, it'll be like four slides. See, I told you, dang it, it did. It literally did. Okay, so this is a funny little game you're playing on me, Christina. Don't like it. <laughs> Back at ya, I'm always on my toes. All right, so this is a silly uh, little thing that I got off the internet, but it kind of explains a little bit better. And anyway, I like looking at diagrams and fun pictures and my words aren't fun. Okay, what is ketosis? So if we stop carbohydrates from coming into our body, what are carbohydrates? Let's go through this again. Don't even start and telling me it's all just bread. I already showed you from the beginning. It is what? Fruit, vegetables, grains, and dairy. Thank you. And all that ultra processed foods. Okay, so we all know that. Thank you so much. Now, if we stop doing that, we have to get into our glycogen or those carbs that we're carrying around in our body. We get that from our liver and from our muscles, okay? Once we drain all of this, we then have to tap into free fatty acids or our fat. Now, those things are floating around all the time. We use them all the time interchangeably because they're little tiny guys. They're not big guys. But once we get rid of all of this, we end up starting to use more and more of our fat. When we use more and more of our fat, a beautiful thing happens. We start creating something called ketones. Now, ketones end up feeding the brain feeding the nervous system and our muscle mass, because we always thought that, boy, I have to eat all the time and I have to eat protein 
and I need carbohydrates. Well, because otherwise I'm going to waste away. My muscles will waste away. I know I used to believe that. Got to eat every two hours. No, no. Ketones, in reality, spare muscle from being broken down and used as energy. Stops it. Won't let it happen. It also increases the fat being burned, okay? So keto or ketogenic or the ketones are very, very powerful. So what does this mean? What does this look like? I had someone in the back who said, um, you eat carbs, I think you said 80 to 100 grams, something. I mean, just, you threw it out. I mean, I wanted all these answers. I wanted all of them. No, but you could once you become fat adapted. But let's just look at this. We already know this doesn't work for most people. Well, that's wrong. For many people, it works until we enter in the standard American diet and that 58% being ultra processed, right? Okay. So this could work if we're truly using whole grains that are, mm, I don't want to go there, but we are doing good things. Okay. Here's a therapeutic diet. And then here's standard keto. Now I'm going to be talking about the therapeutic diets because I think it's imperative that everyone understands ketogenic diet didn't start on Google, okay? Um, so you can see here, the I can see here. Okay, 90% um, in therapeutic diets is fat, 5% five, 5 protein, 5% is carbohydrate. I don't really wanna go into too much of this because I'm gonna have more slides coming up. But the, the standard ketogenic diet is 75% fat, 25, 20 to 25, and 5% from carbs, okay? Don't worry about it because we will be going back to that. I pushed the button, I'm waiting. Not funny. Patience, look at that, I have none. Okay, so is this a fad diet? Some of you said yes, some of you said no. Many of you didn't say anything except the grasshoppers. I liked it all. Okay, ketogenic diet was first introduced back in the 1920s. And actually it started in 1911. But that wasn't a true, um, they didn't know what the heck they were doing. They just saw it and went, wow, this is amazing. What it first started off as a treatment for epileptics. And it started in children. And what they found is that they could have a very, very high concentration of fats in their diet. They actually calm the brain down. So much so that it stopped the seizures. Um, I was just talking to a speech therapist today and she um, has very, very diverse uh, patients. And she said one of her uh, patients, she's a, a, she's a pediatric um, speech therapist. She said, you know, one of my patients is actually on the ketogenic diet. And I just am astounded at how much fat she's actually eating and yet still growing. So a therapeutic uh, eating plan is very, very specific and should be something that you don't just do, but rather you only are working with an expert. Since the 1920s, um, we have improved on our epileptic anti-seizure seizure medications. Or, um, and with that, we stopped using this as a protocol. And that's kind of unfortunate and fortunate. One, it's a very hard thing to manage for a child, but the drugs themselves have very hard side effects, like all drugs. So it's a kind of like this kind of thing. Um, but what I wanna show you is the ketogenic eating plan in the therapeutic realm continues Unbelievable research. This is literally, I just, I couldn't keep copying and pasting. This is 2021, okay? This research is all happening on Alzheimer's, dementia, neurodegenerative diseases, um, things from, oh, I can keep going, um, uh, improving your gut microbiome, but the most 
of the research that I really am, am super excited about is the ketogenic eating plan for neurodegenerative diseases. That is one of the best things that are coming out of this. So I, I didn't want to talk about that really like in depth. I'm going to be doing more of it tomorrow in another presentation. But what I want you to hear is that most of these studies are concluding that ketones are improving cognition in people with cognitive delay. It's improving um, in Parkinson's the gait and spatial awareness, as well as some other signalings. This is some really powerful stuff. And uh, to get into, I'm sorry, I have to get water and I'm not drinking that poison. Okay, there, um, I'm back. Um, but the power is in the ketones themselves, okay? The ketones themselves. Okay, it's gonna advance twice because I got a little anxious. Okay, yep, told ya. All right, yes, okay. So let's take Google and um, Men's Health and Shape Magazine and throw them out the window. And let's talk about what is really happening in these ketogenic diets and what the benefits are. Because I told you, it is over a hundred years old with some really powerful benefits. So in cancer alone, it is helping to reduce blood sugar levels uh, and increase the, I can't even read that from here, um, increase um, susceptibility to the actual whatever radiation or chemo, if my cell is more receptive to it, I have a better chance of surviving. Um, it also is decreasing, or I'm sorry, reducing insulin and cell uh, proliferation means uh, multiplying, okay? And so if we can decrease that, that's pretty astounding as well. Let's go on to uh, epigenome. So I don't know if Many of you have heard of this, but I'm going to just say it, and then I'm going to walk away from it. Epigenetics, okay? Epigenetics, if you haven't, go out there. Please get, get in the know. This is how um, our epigenetics or our genome or what's happening in our um, RNA, DNA, how is this actually changing? Do keto ketones have an impact? It does. A huge impact. So much so, BHB, by the way, it, there's three different types of ketones that are released. BHB is one of them, beta hydroxybutyrate. Do you want me to say that or just leave it alone as ketones? I think that's a better idea. Yeah. So, anyway, this very specific ketone actually increases the, um, is a signaling molecule. It is inhibiting certain things, increasing other things. Good. It's all good. Yay. Good for us. Okay, cardiovascular disease, it's actually lowering triglycerides, increasing HDLs, and it lowers this uh, type of LDL cholesterol, which I'll go back to, and lowers these ratios, which are also something that should be lowered. In weight loss, a reduction in appetite, huh, ketones reduce appetite. I have people, I have to tell them, you really need to eat. You really need to eat. But I'm not hungry. I know. I get it. But you got to eat. And that's because the ketones really change the appetite. And I want to preface this. Did you remember what I said about how the carbohydrates and those fat stores, how they actually increase or change our satiety, our satisfaction, and our hunger? Yeah, hope you remembered that one. This one actually decreases. It also takes literal fat from the inside and from our body and is using it from, for energy. Meanwhile, these ketones are re, uh, maintaining our lean tissue or muscle and helping to keep our resting metabolic rate stable. As we age, you guys all know you lose muscle, right? 
Who doesn't? We all do. We all know it. Okay. Some people more than others. We also lose what? Our uh, basal metabolic rate. So I used to be able to eat like a cow, but now that I'm old, I can't do that anymore. Right. Do you remember all that? Boy, when I was young. Well, this actually is sparing the muscle mass and keeping your metabolic rate the same. That's pretty astounding. Not to mention what is happening in diabetes and in our gut bacteria. Okay, I'm watching the time and I should be giving myself the nudge. But Molly, what about all that fat being harmful? No one has ever asked that. Come on. Everyone has to know. Everyone has to say, well, wait, isn't that saturated fat? Weren't we told it's really bad for us? No one's even going to shake their heads. You guys are all blank waiting to leave. I am not giving out anything free. All right. I'm just teasing you. I found this really, really fascinating. So I had to stop and just talk about it. Okay. Has anyone ever heard of Ansel Keys? It doesn't matter if you have or haven't. I'm going to, I figured you did. All right. 1970, there was a study, a very, very large study. And this study determined what we considered to be healthy fat or not healthy fat. Okay. All coming from the diet. Well, <clears throat> It was called the lipid hypothesis, so fat hypothesis, also called the seven, uh, the seven countries study. Now, in reality, they took 22 different countries, but they only cherry picked seven to put in the study. They chose the seven, and, and I'm not making, this is all public knowledge, you can go back, because we actually end up, the punchline is down here. So what ended up happening is, <clears throat> This, um, this person wanted their hypothesis with saturated fat and cholesterol was associated with an increased risk of heart disease. And that's what they really wanted to prove from the diet. Okay. Much of the data was left out like, hmm, smoking. Do you know how many people smoked during that study? Holy cow. I looked at the study. A lot of people smoked that was thrown out, wasn't even looked at. Plus, they only looked at seven countries. To the result of, here we are, 90s. Um, I know I was on a fat-free kick. Everything was fat-free, fat-free, fat-free. And I loved a big, I almost said a bad word, big bagel every single morning because those were good. Those were really good. And just white was the best. Nothing else. Right. Okay. Because, but I was doing what was right because I was eating fat free cream cheese on my bagel because I had to get rid of all that fat. But then comes in how we are using refined carbs to make things taste better. Right. And then we come into trans fats. And we all know trans fats are bad. Right. I hope we do. Okay. Good. That's good. So from this study, all this is going on. 2010, the Journal of Clinical Nutrition did a review of 300,000 studies, okay? And concluded no relationship of cardiovascular disease with saturated fat from the diet. 2015, the US government reversed its recommendations that dietary cholesterol, uh, they, they were restricting the cholesterol coming in from food it's reversed. Pretty powerful. All the havoc, how our food industry has changed, what's been going on. So this here is showing us another thing because many of us don't even know this. When we look at LDLs and we're like, oh, my LDLs are high. Uh-oh. No, there's a lot more depth in there. We got to know how big are these babies? Are they big or are they small? 125 is above what we should be at. So that's high. Oh, God. Joyce, you're not doing your work. Ah, so if they're big, you have a very low risk of anything happening. When those things become smaller and smaller, they get stickier and stickier. And then that's when the risk is high. Okay. So let's get more, uh, we, we got to get clearer on what we're talking about. 
and where it came from. So again, obviously we know this isn't working. We know this is working. Now, is this working? Let's go on. So Molly has to get to the meat and potatoes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, different types of keto. The standard ketogenic diet, it's very low in carbs, uh, moderate protein, high in fats. Then you have something called a cyclical ketogenic diet. And that means that we're coming in and out. So we're increasing our carbs and going back down into ketogenic diet. And then um, this targeted is more like um, around the time that you're working out. This one is a high protein ketogenic diet. So all I'm saying is there's a lot of different ones, okay? Which one is right for you? I don't know, because I don't know, well, I know some of you, but I don't know all of you. <clears throat> Okay, I pushed it again. <laughs> yeah, but I like this. It's fun. This gives me something to play with, and I don't move as much for you guys on screen. Um, okay, so I really want to explain how this looks and what it looks like and how it is. Not that I'm going to be your computer, but I want you to see. So if I were going to break up my macros. So macros mean anything that has calories. Okay. It means that you eat food. I always say that because it does kind of drive me nuts when people say, well, I eat macros. I'm like, that means you eat real food. That's all it is. It is a carbohydrate. It's a protein and a fat. It's called food. Okay. But if we are going to get into breaking it up and I had to get my calories or my my carbs really, really low. Here's a 2000 calorie diet. If I was gonna eat 70 to 80% from fat, 20 to 25% from protein, five to 10% from carbohydrates, what would that look like? That's what it would look like in calories. Now, this is what grams, that's how much energy I get from fat from one gram, that's how much I get from protein, that's how much. I get from a carbohydrate. Well, from fat, I'm going to have to actually eat about 156 to 180 grams of fat in a day. I'm going to have to also, as you see, how much protein, how many carbs. So the carbs in this one and the 2000 calorie diet is anywhere between 25 and 50. Okay, I'm going to start giving you my secrets. Um, my rule of thumb is that protein is extremely important. It is extremely important. Protein should never go. I'm, I'm making a general statement. Obviously, for men, it's going to be much higher. But for women, especially, absolutely never below that 60 grams. Okay. Um, and it has to come from something that is high quality. The other thing is that when I start people off on ketogenic eating, I want to drain their carbs that they've stored, right? I want to drain the carbs that are in the liver and in the muscle. I keep those carbs down to 30 to 40 grams. But the difference is these carbs <clears throat> are coming from vegetables, vegetables. Oh, wait, did I say vegetables? Yeah, vegetables. Okay. So you may think, well, what does that actually look like? Because I don't know numbers and I don't really care about these macros. So let me show you in, um, instead what a healthy, quote, healthy eating plan would be. And it does look healthy versus a healthy ketogenic eating plan. So, cause I can't read it up there. Um, 530 calories in the left-hand side. It has orange juice, granola, and low-fat yogurt. Sounds pretty good to me, right? I mean, that's something I used to eat. Am I the only one? You big liars. I know you did. Probably did it this morning. Okay. Um, now, here we're thinking, oh my gosh, that's bacon and eggs. I'm not allowed to eat eggs. and I'm definitely not allowed to eat bacon. Do I need to go through my slides again and show you um, what had happened? Do I need to prove again to you that you've been bamboozled? Okay, 
this needs to be quality. And I talk about quality all the time. So here we have the same amount of calories proportionately. We have 11 carbs, seven grams of fiber, 45 grams of fat. I can't read that. Something from protein and one gram of sugar. Okay. Now, if this is what I would want you to eat, this would be. This would be from grass-fed, grass-finished right here. And this is definitely one of your carbs. Okay? That is healthy. Now, this is also healthy. I talk about quality all the time because what you are eating is what is making your cells, right? So if I am going to eat an animal that has been conventionally raised, okay? Um, I, I, I pushed it, but I'm gonna just do that. There you go. Okay, there we go. Um, if I am eating uh, food and um, I'm gonna eat a cow, not the whole thing right now, but eventually I will. I'm gonna eat a cow and it's been conventionally raised. What does that mean? It's been given corn, right? That corn that it just ate is genetically modified, okay? So it's genetically modified. It's eating that. It's also confined. Now, I am going to slaughter that and I'm going to eat that. What am I eating? Well, I'm not making anything up. Let's just look at science and look. It's the proof is in what, if you cut it up and dissect it, the fat and the marbling of that animal that's been conventionally grown, raised, is actually different. It has a higher amount of pro-inflammatory fats, okay? And less omega-3s. Everyone knows in this room, omega-3s are very healthy for us, right? Yes, omega-3s decrease our inflammation, helping our body be better not increasing. That cow, the way it had eaten, changes its fat completely on the molecular level. Now, in addition, did I not just tell you we've all been bamboozled by these obesogens and how maybe our fat is working against us? Okay. I'll, I could keep going on that, but I'm going to be done. And I will tell you all of my um, problems with our government. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. <laughs> um, so advantages of this ketogenic diet. First of all, we have to be able to train our body to use fat as an energy source. Our body does not know how to do it on its own. Otherwise, like I said, 400 pound person walking around with all that money would be utilizing that. But there's a lot of chemi uh, hormones that are being changed. So we have to learn how to do it. Well, one of the benefits is that we actually learn how to do it. We train our bodies and we train our fat stores. We actually see a huge reduction in this abdominal fat, the stuff that is like so dangerous and much more dangerous for our heart than, than saturated fats. Uh, decreasing in our hungers and cravings. Muscle mass is actually saved. Many of these I've already gone through, but I'll quickly go through them. There is a regulation in hormones, decrease in insulin and blood sugar regulation. Mental clarity, unbelievable much more stable. You're not in these highs and jumping up and down all the time. A fascinating study showing these uh, stable, br stabilized brain waves of normal um, adults and then given carbohydrates, how unstable it was. The brain was just unbelievably unstable. It also decreases body inflammation. Um, improves our cholesterol, gut bacteria, food sensitivities actually improve, and it has this anti-aging property to it because it decreases oxidative stress. So we are not damaging so many cells and our cells are able to heal. 
Okay, well, there has to be something bad about this. Otherwise, everybody would be on the bandwagon. Okay, I'm not sure how that happened, but I'm gonna leave it alone. So one of the big things, and I'm gonna give you remedies for all of this, secrets to the trade. One thing though, it's very hard to maintain. It is hard to maintain. That's a lot of fat to have to eat in a day. You may think, no way, I love bacon. No, it's hard to maintain. In addition, the first three, five days usually inhibits anyone from ever wanting to try it because there's something called the keto flu. And what that is, these symptoms right here, and these are can be dramatic. Sometimes people don't have them, but there's, a, um, there's something to be said about these. So the symptoms are dizziness, blood pressure changes, we get this tachycardia, so rapid heart rate. We get the sweating. Um, sometimes we'll get brain fog. We also have headaches, nausea, mus muscle cramping. Why in the heck would we do this? Electrolyte imbalance, very much so constipation, okay? Now there's something out there. So the disadvantages here, has anyone heard of D dirty keto? Dirty keto? Okay. Well, dirty keto, I've seen it. I had one man who I wanted to stop working with altogether. Told him, you got to stop. 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 Lo and behold, gallbladder removed. Gallbladder attack. Wasn't doing it the way I kept telling him. I'm gonna stop working with you because this is inappropriate. You are going to hurt yourself. Yes, he did. Okay, it's serious. It's not something to mess around with. It is serious. He was in it for years, years. Okay, so what can happen? It can lead to damaged kidneys, ha, gallbladder. Um, I, I can't tell you why all of that, but it can also spike your LDLs it usually changes um, your blood profile. When we are not eating the vegetables, we actually can harm our gut bacteria, which then creates a havoc with our brain health and more inflammation. People that don't eat enough carbohydrates actually have sleep disturbances and pretty severe. Menstrual cycles will get screwed up in women because you need carbohydrate to have a menstrual cycle. We also see this keto psychosis. When people stay on this way too long, their brain and their body almost, um, it, it's counterintuitive and they're also not doing it the right way, okay? So this all sounds horrible. Plus there's a, uh, there's a big change in their nutrient, nutrient content of the foods. And these are typically people doing it dirty. So they're eating cheeseburgers, bacon slashed on, sticking pounds of ranch dressing on, I don't know what, and then calling it a day. Okay. That's a dirty keto. Nutrient deficiencies will cause also those, that psychosis, the damage to these organs. So it's nothing to just take and let's go do it. And I'm going to follow this guy because it seemed to work for him kind of uh, approach. There are ways of remedying a lot of these problems. And so I think the first and the biggest thing I want to tell you is how do I get rid of the keto flu? What's actually happening? Why is it happening? And then, um, I'm sorry, I should step back. I, I, I'm going to actually tell you why, then I'm going to tell you how to combat it. Okay. And because it, it will happen. One thing you have to understand is that the flu or this keto flu happens because we lose so much water. Now, I want to stop and do a little bit of science. Every, remember I mentioned that we store, uh, we store sugar in our bodies. Well, that sugar or glycogen, to every one of that, I have to bring on three things of water, okay? Three molecules of water to one molecule of 
glucose or sugar, okay? So when I'm getting rid of all that sugar from my liver and from my muscles, I'm also dramatically losing a lot of water. With that, there's a dumping or a spilling of electrolytes. So we already know when our electrolytes are off, what do we have? Blood pressure changes, we can get dizzy, lightheaded, feel nauseous, sweats, heart palpitation. So do you see where muscle cramping? So what do we have to do? We have to attack this. And the way we do it is the secret that I'll show you in a second. Does anyone have questions about this? There's some other nuances, um, but we'll move on. But it's important to understand that our bodies, it takes a little bit of time for us to switch from using all that sugar because we're used to just doing that. Our body doesn't know how to tap into fat because we don't do that. We're, we're constantly feeding it sugar and that's what it knows how to do. Now we are trying to change that. So we really are flushing out a lot of water with that, like I said, the electrolytes. So stay, here are five things that I would recommend highly. Number one, hydration. Obvious, right? Well, duh, Molly, just drink water. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> we have to drink about half of our body weight in ounces of water. Okay, before everyone says, I got that, cool. But I want you to understand, when we are dumping all that water, we can lose about 2.9 liters of water. That's a lot of water. I can't simply just put all that water back in and expect it to be absorbed. It won't be, okay? It doesn't mean I'm over hydrating my kidneys. What I'm saying is you're gonna need to go into this um, where you're actually going to dilute all the electrolytes you already had in your body. And that'll even cause more problems and more of this keto flu. So the best way of doing it is to make sure that you're putting it in like water infusions, putting lemon, cucumbers, ginger, raspberry, don't worry. Yes, I understand those have carbohydrates. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to diffuse it with something else so that you are going to absorb it so much better. And it works. So it's not rocket science. It's literally taking the lemons that I used yesterday in all of the products that some of you will be eating tomorrow at my senior connections. But I took them, I saved the peels because all of this gives me a way of getting my water into my cells. And then you drink it. What about all the teas? Teas make an ama amazing way of getting in different herbs, right? Different electrolyte properties, as well as some of those phytochemicals. So that's extremely important. Number two. Why before noon? Because what ends up happening, and this I see it a lot, people don't drink. And then they end up drinking everything right before they go to bed and then they're not sleeping. So then I'm getting in this perpetual cycle of no sleep, which then causes cortisol to go up. And if caught, you see where I'm going with all this. So I want them in there. And then one other thing, if you wanna think about it this way, with detox, you know, we always think about detox diets, but really think about it this way. If I'm trying to get rid of bad things, I gotta flush it, right? And if I'm not flushing it, how do I expect it to get out? So get it out early and you're going to feel that much better. Number two, sodium and potassium. Now I want to talk about coming from real foods. I know there's supplements, but let's just talk real foods. I automatically want people adding in at least two teaspoons of Himalayan salt or another type of salt. There's ones that are mineral, mineral based are the best. Okay. So you're adding in more salt. When you feel that um, tired sluggishness, 
uh, during the day when you're going through that flu-like part, if you take a little bit of salt, literally salt, you can lick it, whatever, and then add a little bit of water, you can drink it, that actually can pick you up because that fatigue will happen based on those fluid uh, fluctuations. Now with sodium, we always have to have potassium because those are opposing minerals. So we wanna think about getting in our potassium in ways, once again, lemon. Lemon is a great way. Bone broth. I don't know how many people read the art. I know no one did. I'm just going to say, I'm hoping everyone did. But I put out a bone broth um, article and a bone broth recipe. Bone broth is astounding for its mineral content. Simply sipping on that, you increase your fluids. You're going to increase the nutrient value. You're going to have collagen and proteins. Green leafies and avocados. Those are ways of getting in naturally the sodium and potassium. I pushed it again, so it'll, it's just a sec. There we go. Now, here's a really big one, okay? Now, I want to tell you guys, you always have to ask your doctor. Ask your doctor. This is ask your doctor, okay? I'm not giving you medical advice. But if I were, <laughs> magnesium. Magnesium is involved in over 300 processes in the body, okay? Chemical processes. Often I get the question, what kind of magnesium should I be taking? Well, this magnesium, this glycinate, the chelated form, is going to be your best source. And that is going to help with these muscle cramping, sleep disturbances, um, People that get this tension in their neck, that's me right now, but tension in muscles, specific muscles, that really, really can help. Headaches, migraines, this is an amazing magnesium to take. It's the appropriate one. It actually crosses the blood-brain barrier. Basically, what I'm saying is it actually gets into the brain and creates this relaxed, feel-good ah, feeling. Okay, so it works very, very nicely. And magnesium, when we're under a lot of stress, magnesium is depleted very, very quickly. And I don't know anyone who got through COVID without being under stress, right? Okay, good. Now, how do I get all those in? I would recommend the supplement for sure because it's uh, definitely one way of getting it in. I pushed it, so I'm gonna give it a second because I'm that, I am that patient. All right, here's a recipe. Very, very simple. Look at that. Simple electrolyte keto pick me up. Half an avocado. What did I say? Avocado has potassium. Now squeeze generously lemon. What did I say about lemon? It has potassium as well. It also has some of the minerals that I'm looking for, and then the Himalayan salt to give me a few more minerals, as well as making sure that I have enough sodium. Very, very simple. Okay, um, the last thing is carnitine. Carnitine is an amino acid. It's one that I would recommend, especially in the beginning of starting a ketogenic diet. It helps um, to actually turn that fat into ketones. I told you our bodies have not been trained to do that. Not trained. So in order to get that to happen, carnitine, that amino acid is one that is extremely important. And if you start to feel slug, uh, sluggish and fatigued while you're trying to get and actually produce ketones, this may be your limiting factor right there. Guess where you get it? red meat, also in collagen. It was the magnesium? Oh, was it? Did I flip too fast? And I was all proud of myself for being patient. Three. Yeah, I was paying attention. Ha, look at that. I fooled you. You know what it should have been? And I guess I took it off somehow. It should be uh, glutamine. Okay, that's an amino acid, but it's an extremely 
extremely powerful um, antioxidant. It's like the best one you could possibly get. It really helps in this whole metabolism as well as protecting the cells from oxidation, which means that we, when we are trying to get into keto, when we're trying to be healthier, that can be your, also a limiting factor. So glutamine, and it's not on here, so I apologize. Yes. Creatinine? Yeah. No, it's not on there. Yeah, last, uh, Did I put it on? No, that's, oh, that's carnitine. Yeah, creatine is not an amino acid. And um, that's a whole story I would love to get into, but I won't. Um, <clears throat> okay, so my rules of engagement. These are my rules. I have rules, don't I, Joyce? I have many rules. I have rules. All right, number one, test your urine. Don't guess. If you don't know if you're in ketosis, why would you keep punishing yourself, right? Test it, don't guess. Now, what do I mean by that? I have urine strips, but I guess I use, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. Um, you want to test the urine. It usually, you'll start to develop ketones. If you are fat adapted, um, I'm, I happen to be fat adapted. So I can easily get ketones if I want, but, if not, it'll take you about three days. Now, um, quality food. Absolutely. I'm all about the quality. You, if you want a source of good meat that's a lower uh, cost, because I am also very cheap, butcher box, butcher box, amazing quality, grass fed, grass finished. It comes all different kinds of meats. So uh, poultry, yes, I'm putting a plug in there. No, I don't get any money for it. Um, I'm also a big proponent of keep it simple. I have no time. I'm not making anything complicated. Five ingredients or less or I'm out, okay? But I am all about every part of that being nutrient dense. Next thing, absolute hydration and electrolytes. I will often make people take electrolytes the next thing, magnesium, the bisglycinate has to happen. Collagen protein has to happen. Carbs are coming from your green leafy vegetables. In the program that I have created, which is coming up soon, um, that I'm going to just give a plug for, I make people in it, no matter what, they're eating two to three cups of green leafies every day. That is no question. Um, intermittent fasting, it's usually a protocol before we even start because that's way, one way of really pushing you into ketosis a lot faster. Uh, multivitamin mineral supplement, uh, establishing a routine because if we're constantly up and down, running around, creating stress and havoc, that actually is not gonna work in our favor. It will not allow us to get into a healthy uh, ketone place. And it actually puts more stress on our body. Um, I need to know your body and so do you. So I have every one document. How do you know if you feel better if you don't know if you felt bad, right? How do I know I'm using fat if I'm not urinating and testing it. If I don't know what my measurements are and I just go, well, I don't think I'm losing anyway. No. The other thing is I need to know your history because if you have any liver issues or if you drink maybe too much alcohol or there's some other things, I can't let you go on a ketogenic diet because everything is processed through the liver. I need you maybe to do a 10 day detox or I, and I mean by cleaning out, or I may want you to have, uh, do a bone broth cleanse. Like I, I, I made Joyce do, um, uh, it will help. It will help. So there's protocols that I need to know who you are and what you are in order to best suit you. 
So these are my rules of engagement. Those things tip the scale for me. Um, there. Now, here's my pitch. Because I find this so beneficial, because um, in order to flex in and out of ketosis, you need to do it right. I've seen so many people gain the weight so rapidly because they go back to their old ways. They don't gradually increase and then come back in. They don't know how to use the sugars anymore. So their body actually, it's a counterintuitive and your body just stores like crazy because it never learned how to do it the right way. Um, with that, this program is something that I'll be starting in January. It is a kicks, it's a ketogenic kickstart, greens kickstart program. I had to put the greens in there because I'm all about the health. I am not about damaging anything in, on you or in you. Uh, the program is, uh, I'll just read it because I can read. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's five weeks. Uh, the ketogenic weight loss programs developed to guide participants through the process of ketogenic clean eating with the structured uh, weekly eating plans. Uh, it'll guide you into ketosis. I will help with the uh, enhancing of fat burning. I'll go through and troubleshoot things along the way. Uh, we focus on whole foods to maximize wellness, thereby losing the weight. Real foods approach, and it's teaching very, very simple recipes. I actually am gonna be having a chef help me. Do you wanna stand up or just wave? There you go. That's that's Sharon. She'll be helping me um, in the preparation of some of these recipes. Um, but anyway, there you go. That is everything. And we're already over. Any questions? I just have one quick question. Yes. You were talking about the ketogenic diet and the, um, the research that they're doing with neurological diseases. Has any... Has there been any uh, research done with ALS patients? Yes. Positive results? Sorry to jump on you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, the question was Has there been research, <clears throat> and I'm about to, has there been research on slowing the progression of a, a neurodegenerative disease like ALS? Okay, and yes. There has been. Even uh, traumatic brain injuries, they've been testing it. So in those, and I want this as a caveat, please, um, it's exogenous ketones, not this product. I'm just showing this as a, an example. It's exogenous ketones. So bringing ketones in outside, you're not making them from your fat. You're actually drinking them and putting them in your bloodstream and your body and then absorbing them. That is the best way to keep those ketones up, especially in like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. A lot of the research is being done that way because it's very difficult to have someone eat if they can't remember to eat. And I'm not being funny, I'm being really serious. It's very difficult to eat if you have Parkinson's when it's you don't have an appetite, et cetera, right? So the research, very, very positive, taking them exogenously, so outside of making it from your own fat, but bringing them in through a substance like this. Yes. Question about the water. So if you don't drink the bottled water, what water do you drink? Okay, the question was, if I don't drink bottled water, what water do I drink? I go up to this thing, it's called the faucet, and I turn it on, and then I put it in and I drink it. I'm being a smart, but that's what you drink. All I'm saying is storing this in plastic, plastic leeches out, that's all. If you wanna take it and drink it, or you can be like me, I'm so obnoxious. This is me, I have one more, but I think I left it up in my office. I carry this stuff every day. 
I'm not kidding you. This one's tea. This one is one thing. The other one is something else. I, I, I make them up and I come prepared. Yep. Yep. How do you know Yes. So she wanted to know, how do I come in and out of it? That is um, a tricky thing. And um, uh, I will tell you just, you can come to me, but typically I would increase the carbs to about, it depends on who you are. Okay. But I would probably start by putting those carbs in right around exercise. By the way, that's a whole nother area that I will cover in this five week class because that's not something I would put it around the exercise. I also would increase it using uh, nat natural, obviously, many more vegetables, the fibers, um, and about 70 to 90 grams of carb. Then I would keep that. And then we would bring it back down. And I even would do it if you're a menstrual, if you had, if you're, if you're um, a woman of menstruating years, I would make sure that we base it on that circadian rhythm. Because in order to release these hormones, we have to have carbohydrates. Okay. Does that make sense? You know, oh, of course. Yes. Yes, of course. And it, we, yeah, it's, but yeah, it's fascinating stuff. Um, I didn't even get into this here, but it's okay. I'm sure everyone is happy about that. So when does the next section of learning about it start? The what, what? So the next section of talking about what we do, the diet and so forth, when does that start so we can learn more about it? This is the good precursor but so that you mean this program yeah she wants to know when that program this this program is going to start january 13th and then it'll be every saturday like i know but every saturday morning 8 30 it'll be in the morning but like 9 30 to 11 30 where we and then you, Saturday, because you get your meal plan, you get your week. Here, go buy your, your stuff. Get ready. There you go. Recipes and everything. Okay. Um, and then you start on Monday. But if we get, you know what I mean? So it, it, I worked it out in my head. It works. Okay. Um, question? to the program um we don't know yet um we are still playing with numbers um but if you are interested i recommend uh giving christina your email or yes email It's not going to be like five hundred dollars or anything. It we're it's going to be a lower number for sure. Uh, we I would never do that. Um, it's it's going to we're we're looking at a couple different prices, two hundred, three hundred, probably one hundred to three hundred, somewhere around there. Big difference. So, that how much is the program? We don't know yet. Go ahead. So growing up, my mom almost died from ketoacidosis. So that, were bad. Thank you for asking that. Okay. So she just um, said her mom almost died. She, uh, her mom obviously was a diabetic and uh, had uh, almost died from ketoacidosis. Well, ketoacidosis is very dangerous as a diabetic. What ends up happening is that your blood becomes extremely acidic. So the pH changes. Now that is different and can be extremely harmful. This is not doing that at all. Ketones, so the formation of this and the changing of this pH, the pH changes in the gut. I very purposely chose, I'm already planning this, uh, alkaline vegetables because it helps to decrease, increase your acidity. See, I'm already planning for this, but no. Acid ketoacidosis, yes, no, yes, no, ketones are extremely beneficial in that situation. 
uh, it's all about the blood, the sugar, uh, the glucose and the insulin and not being able to maintain. It. Yeah. Okay. I had a question way in the back. You, you can, you can drink, you can count your coffee as water. Yes. But um, I do want just water, like with these infusions, because uh, if you're just drinking it with caffeine, there's a debate if caffeine is uh, diuretic or not. Uh, if you're caffeine sensitive, yes. S uh, the going thing is you can have up to four cups, like eight ounce cups of coffee, and it's not considered a diuretic. I don't believe that. I believe everyone is so different. Okay. That's so, yes. There you go. Oh, question. Um, uh, about fluid and when do you drink your coffee? Coffee can be counted. Oh no, you can have alcohol. I'm not that mean. She wanted to know if she can booze it up on the program. No, I'm just teasing. All right, somebody else is asking the same question. No, that's yo. No, no, no. You can drink alcohol. You can drink alcohol. I need you to get into ketosis and that's different. Bye Lainey. Um, but we, but no, no. Okay. That's fine. It's off. I'll shake my little thing. Okay. A few more questions. If they're really dire. It is uncured. It comes. Yes. Yes. Butcher box. Yes. It's uncured. Yes. I should really honestly refer everyone. I know because I can get $30 like a referral fee. Okay. Yes, there will be. And so, yes, if you want to take that program, and like I said, it's, um, it's going to be um, well worth it. We're still working it out because of the recipes and the food budget. Um, <clears throat> but there will be a limit. And it may be maxed at 12 or possibly 14. I'm, I think it'll be 12. You can put your information. Do you want like a kind of a first call list, if that makes sense? Um, yeah. Yeah, we just have, we're finalizing the budget stuff. With kids, so it's not ready to register. But if you want to, I'll put you on a list and kind of be like, I'm sending you the link first. If that <laughs> and I apologize. It's because I, I've been doing other things and haven't gotten the food budget put together yet. Yeah. Uh, qu last question, and then I I would love to go home. <laughs> I've been here a long time. One thing I do want to mention, I, I know we're all, you know, you may think, I do want one more. Um, I just mentioned that I will do the ketogenic uh, diet. Okay. I, I'm not fat. I don't, I don't, pr pr I don't think I am. What I am chasing is those ketones because I know what those ketones do for our bodies, okay? So if I am not, this is what is very individualized, guys. You've got to think of this, please, please, please. If I am, if I don't have enough necessarily like about 30 extra pounds of body fat, then I need to make sure as a dietitian, if I was working with you to make sure you're putting that in and in the morning to actually force your body to use it as fat, to train your body how to use it and to kick you into ketosis. There are so many wonderful ways and, but you don't know, cause this is just a little bite. It's not even, it's a morsel of what this really can do for you. Um, but it is a very interesting and powerful way of eating and can be astounding and change your life. Thank you so much for coming. Ideally, Saturday morning, aqua is 10 to 11. Well, 10 to 10 to 35. Wow. And 
Yeah. It's, we, we have to go based on no, what's here. I know, oh. but then you need to twist their arm to move the aqua time. Oh, but this place is never available. Well, I know. Yes. That's what I'm yeah. saying. If the kitchen's harder to get, then can they shift the aqua time yeah. earlier or later? No. I'm sure. I could. I go. And then I could jump and, and swim and do everything. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, um, I had so many little things. The pool, right? <laughs> hey, how are you? Hey, Dave. Okay, let's leave. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just oh yeah. Probably because it's poison. No, that's deep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I will steal it. But you're gonna have to get it. Which is way up there. 